Coming up tonight on this special edition of the Sports Report, we get you ready for the high school football postseason. A full bracket breakdown of our 22 area schools spread across six divisions. Plus, we'll be joined in studio by several head coaches. Sports Report starts now. And thank you for joining us on this special edition of the Sports Report. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark Kuntz and Annie Lynch, among others, will be joining us shortly. Special thanks to Donato's Pizza for keeping us fed this evening. As the calendar flips to November, it's time to get you ready for the high school football playoffs, which begin in just five days. All of the Week 11 matchups are set, so let's dive right in and take a look at our first bracket of the night, starting in Division II. Lima Senior's close 49-48 loss to Toledo Central Catholic on Friday dropped the Spartans to 8-2 on the season. And when all the points were calculated, Senior High locked in as the 5 seed in Region 6. So that means Mike Fell and company will hit the road in Week 11, traveling to Miamisburg. Vikings finished 9-1 and, and won the GWAC South title. Cincinnati LaSalle claim the top spot in the region, and if the Spartans get past Miamisburg, they will get the winner of LaSalle and Butler. Spartans are seeking their first playoff victory in almost two decades, and Andy Lynch is joined now by Lima Senior Head Coach Mike Fell. Thank you, Matt. We are going to talk Division II, Region 6. You saw the bracket. Now we'll talk with the head coach of Lima Senior back in the playoffs for a second consecutive year. Mike Fell, that certainly has got to feel good after taking over the program. 0-10 to 5-5 your first year, and then... Two playoff appearances, eight and two. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's a great feeling. These, these young men have worked extremely hard in the three years we've been there. And, you know, to get a chance to get into the playoffs when a lot of schools are going home right now, you know, it's, it's big fun. You'll play Miamisburg. It'll be on natural grass, something you did against Oregon mm -hmm. Clay, but not a whole lot this year. Any, any concern about being on the road, but then also being on grass? Yeah, oh yeah. It's always different. Um, I looked at their field on, on tape and stuff, and, there's not a whole lot of grass left on their field, so oh, it's a boy. lot of dirt. You know, so we're hoping no rain because we don't want to be in a mud, a mud bowl type thing. But you know, if it's a if it's a the way it is with this dirt and everything, it'll be a pretty fast track. You know, it's going to be natural, you know, turf like we're used to. I guess that's what we call natural. That's right. Yeah. 43.7 points a game. We knew the offense would be good again. Greatest show on turf. How has this offense progressed as the season has gone along? How has it surprised you at times? Well, you know, we the probably the biggest thing that's yeah, a little surprising with how good Jaden Walker is. Yeah. Um, our offensive line's done an excellent job all year, but Jaden, you know, last we had Janiel Lyles, who's the all-time leading rusher at uh, Lima Senior, but we didn't miss a beat with Jaden, and Jaden's actually statistically having a better year. I mean, he's got 25 touchdowns, 1,500 yards in 10 games, and uh, we played, you know, the defending state champs last week. Within one point, he had 200 yards against him and four touchdowns, so, you know, it was, he's having an excellent year. We knew our passing game was going to be there. Darius is back and with Ruben and Rico and, you know, DeMonte. So we knew that was going to be effective. But it was it's great to have Jaden have such a good year. That offensive line had to replace an offensive line from last year. And they had some growing pains in the early going, but they've really come into form as a unit. Yeah, we've had um, the same five guys all the way up until um, second quarter last week. Keaton Towsey went down with a, with a bruised knee. But, you know, those five guys, Darius Collins is our left tackle. Keaton Towsey was our left guard. And Jordan Lutz played there the other day. Dakota Balo is our center, you know, Jordan McClendon was our right guard and Caleb Tyson our right tackle. Mm -hmm. And they've just had a great year and they've, you know, we're averaging 500 yards a game and 43, 43 points, so they're doing something right. Playoff loss last season, a tough loss to end the regular season this year. What did you tell the team on Saturday? Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what can you tell us that you told the team? You know, I, I didn't even see the team on Saturday. Okay. We, um, after the game Friday, you know, I, it was a crushing loss. It was one of those that you know, it's tough to get over, but last year at this time when we had it, you know, we had to sit a whole nother year and wait for it. This time, you know, hey, great, it's over, but now we got Miamisburg. Get our minds off, got my mind off of it. You know, you can't feel sorry for yourself when you got something else to do. And, you know, we worked Saturday, and we just got done working today with the coaches. We've got our game plan together, and now we'll work with these guys Monday and start building them back up. And, you know, it's supposed to be a beautiful week to practice, and uh, it'll be a lot easier to get guys out there in 70 degree weather than it would be 30 degree weather to practice. Miamisburg with a legendary coach of sorts, a guy you know well, that team will be disciplined and hardworking. 
Yeah, Steve Chanel is their head coach, and uh, I worked with Steve when I was on the directors there at, at the uh, High Football Coaches Association. You know, he's a guy that's going to go in the Hall of Fame. He was the head coach at Trenton Edgewood for a long time. They're a solid wing T football team. What he does is he teaches these guys, you know, it's the basic. It's Skip Bachman football from St. Mary's, and they, you know, they have a couple wings, but they run it. They run dive. They run trap. They run buck sweep. They do all those basic things. He's got a 6'6", 270-pound mm -hmm. lineman who's going to Ohio State. He's already committed. He's a junior, and he's a beast. You know, and you, know, you look at their run, they run 80% of the time and 75% of the time right behind him. All right, Mike Fell, good luck against Miamisburg. Friday at 7.30 o'clock, start for that one. We'll take a Donato's pizza break. When we return, we're looking at Divisions 3, 4, and 5 here on this special edition, Sports Support Playoff Edition. Welcome back. Turning our attention to Division 3 now, Wapakoneta won a perfect 10-0 in the regular season for the second straight year. In fact, since head coach Travis Moyer took over at the start of last season, the Redskins are 22-1 with the lone loss coming in four overtimes in last year's regional finals. Taking a look at Region 10, the WBL champs are the one seed and will host Belmont on Friday night. That game is set for a 7.30 p.m. start. Salina also in this region, the 7-3 Bulldogs settling in as the sixth seed, and they will travel to Trotwood for Trotwood-Madison. A potential Wapak vs. Salina rematch could come in the regional finals. Should Wapak advance, they will get the winner of Mount Healthy and New Richmond, while Tippecanoe and Piqua round out the bracket as the 7-2 and two seeds. Moving on to Division 4 now, and that's where we find the third WBL playoff team. It's Ottawa Glandorf, the 7-3 Titans claiming the 5 spot. And they're playing into Week 11, taking on Indian Lake, who finished 8-2 and, and won the Mad River Division of the Central Buckeye Conference. Bishop Hartley, the one seed in this region, and OG could see them in the next round if they get past the Lakers. Bath, also in this region, just missing out on the playoffs at 7-3. Wildcats finished tied for 8th, but Port Clinton claims the final spot on a tiebreaker. Continuing on now to Division 5, the defending state champs Coldwater. A perfect 10-0 earns them the three seed in Region 18. Cavs will host Bethel Tate on Friday night. Coldwater seeking its fourth straight state title, and if they make it to the state finals, it would be their seventh straight season playing the maximum 15 games. Brookville, the top seed in this region, Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy, the two. Remember, Coldwater defeated CHCA last season in the state semifinals, and they could see them again as early as the regional semis this year. A lot of information to digest there in Divisions 3, 4, and 5, so let's bring in our panel to help break it all down. Mark Kuntz is with a couple of other Marks and an Aaron. Mark? Well, thank you, Matt. We are going to take a look at the brackets, get some thoughts and analysis from our Motley crew as Mark Shine, Mark Miller, and we're going to call you Mark Matthews for this segment, at least. Otherwise <laughs> I known probably as, have a relative named Mark somewhere down the line. Otherwise known as Aaron Matthews. And we'll start with Division 2. Big news, obviously, Lima Sr. back into the postseason for the second straight year. Mark Shine, they head south to Miamisburg. Not as far south as perhaps they thought they were going to go. Miamisburg might be a better matchup. It's definitely a different type of style than what Lima Sr. is used to seeing. Well, I would agree. And I think the problem they're going to have to deal with if you're a Lima Sr. Spartan, where are we at mentally? You know, we've had that last year we had a playoff game that we're ahead at halftime. Big, we lose. Just coming off the Toledo Central Catholic game, being up 27 and losing. Where are the Spartans at mentally? That's the key this week. And I suppose, Mark Shine, the good news is, unlike last year where they had to sit all season thinking about the way they lost that game to Harrison, they are already past the Central Catholic loss. They're already starting to think about Miami's where you can quickly put that in the, in the rear of your mirror. Being in the playoffs last year prepared them for this year. You know, they, they thought they were going to play week 11, and so it's not a surprise. It's not as big a deal in the area. Everybody expected it. I think they'll be more prepared, but I, like Mark, think the mental part of thinking, even if they get up big in this game, can we hold on? That's going to be huge. Aaron, let's look at Region 10 now. A couple of Western Buckeye League teams making it as Wapkinetta's the one seed. Salina, first time since the late 90s. Salina's in the postseason. They'll be on the road taking on Trotwood Madison. Wapak, they've got that long regular season winning streak. Travis Moyer, a long regular season winning streak dating back to Bucyrus Winford. But they hasn't had the great postseason run yet for Travis Moyer. Seemed pretty good run last year. Is this Wapak team primed to make a deep run? I think so. I really do. And they had a nice advantage for them on Saturday night when Dayton Belmont actually played as part of a triple header at Welcome Stadium. And him and his staff were able to get a sneak peek because they knew it was either going to be them or it was going to be Piqua. And even as late as 9 o'clock last night, that game, by the way, didn't start till 9.30. Right. But as even as late as 9 o'clock, they were playing Piqua. 
but conventional wisdom says, hey, a Belmont win or loss, they're probably going to be the eight seed. Belmont ends up losing that game. They finish at 7-2 and two on the year, and they come to Wapakoneta to take on the Redskins. I think the Redskins in this game could roll, but they're going to be prepared. They're going to treat this as if it's you know the end of the line because it very easily could be if you play bad football. Mark Miller, Salina on the road, taking on a very good Trotwood Madison team. Doesn't have necessarily the best record as they have had in years past, but still a very talented Trotwood Madison team. Salina struggled a little bit last week to beat Kenton, came on in the fourth quarter, had the comfort behind victory. What's their mindset heading down to Troutwood Madison? Well, their mindset is, is excitement because, as you mentioned, it's been a long time. And, and so that program's come all the way back. Troutwood Madison is a tough opponent. That's the one that took Wapak to four overtimes last year. So they're good. They get in about every year. Uh, it'll be a tough challenge for the Bulldogs. But, hey, you know, it's a second season. Once you're in, you're in, and let's see what happens. Mark Schein looking at Region 12 now, Division 4. Indian Lake, Ottawa, Glandorf, the 4-5 matchup. You usually have your best games at 4-5 matchup. Titans make the trip down to Indian Lake. First ever playoff appearance for the Lakers. And I think what's going to happen with Indian Lake, Mark, is they're just going to be jacked up. You know, this is their first event. And the thing is, can they relax and play? Now, obviously, you want to be excited and enthused, but your first time in to an OG team that's experienced playoff-wise has done this type of thing before, and not just in football, but in multiple sports. I think the Titans are sitting in a pretty good spot right here. Also in Region 12, Port Clinton is the eight seed. Bath tied Port Clinton, finished eight, but Aaron Matthews, Port Clinton makes the postseason. Bath is at home basically because Port Clinton's wins were a little bit more better than Bath's wins. Yeah, basically that's how it shook out and uh, did some homework on this, had some help on this, thankfully, because it was a little too far above my brain, <laughs> uh, especially late Friday night trying to figure out everything. But how it worked out is the second level points was equal to the sum of your deponent, defeated opponent's first level points. The third level points was the sum of your defeated opponent's second level points. And that is how Port Clinton got in because they were about 100 points better than Bath in that regard. But still a heck of a run by Bill Garland and his team putting together a five-game win streak to close out the season. They had injuries. They had guys that got banged up, especially the, the guys up front and their offensive and defensive lines. But they were, you know, put together a nice run. And I'll be honest, Bath, to me, finishing 7-3 and three was one of the surprises of the season as well, having seen them earlier in the year. And I honestly thought that this was a team that could struggle to get to four wins. Finally, let's take a look quickly at Region 18, which is Division 5. Mark Miller, mm -hmm. Coldwater's region to win? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, the odd thing about that is defending state champs and all the records and, and strings that they have, and they're the third seed. You know, so it tells you something's a little messed up with that thing because they play in the MAC. But nonetheless, uh, they're used to it. They got a home game. That's all they really care about right now. And, and yeah, I think everybody's looking at the Cavaliers to say who's going to beat them. And you look at Coldwater's point totals. They had such a high point total. They would have made the postseason in Division One. That's how <laughs> impressive Coldwater's record was this year. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll take a look at Division Sixes and Sevens, as well as talk to a couple of coaches who will be facing off against each other on Saturday night. Division six in the spotlight now. Last year, Van Buren made it to the postseason for the first time in school history. And after starting this season 0-3, a repeat trip to week 11 seemed unlikely, but the Black Knights finished strong, winning their last seven, and they find themselves back in the playoffs. Van Buren sitting at the five spot in Region 20. Knights hitting the road to take on undefeated Gibbonsburg. GMC champs Tenora, the two seed, they'll host Seneca East, and Ayersville is the six, traveling to North Robinson for a matchup against Colonel Crawford. These games on Saturday, all 7 p.m. starts. 9-1 Winford is the one seed. Three more local teams in Region 22, including the top seed Marion Local. The four-time defending state champs finished 9-1 on the season, the lone loss coming to Coldwater in Week 7. And check out that 3-6 matchup, Jefferson versus Spencerville Round 2. The Wildcats, of course, defeated the Bearcats on Friday night to win the NWC title. The 9-1 Spencerville Bearcats fall to the sixth spot, while Jefferson is third in the region. Delphus hosting the rematch on Saturday, 7 p.m. That should be a lot of fun. And he is joined by the Wildcats head coach, Chris Summers. Thank you, Matt. Division 6, very interesting as Region 22. We've been watching it all season. Very packed. Three local teams getting into the playoffs, and two will face off with one another. We'll talk to both head coaches, starting with Delphus Jefferson's Chris Summers. Here you go, seven days later at Spencerville again, yeah. but at your place, you know, good, bad, how do you feel? Uh, a little bit of both, I guess, yeah. you know. Um, they have a great team. 
so you have to prepare for that. And right away, you, you know, you, you celebrate a NWC title, but then you find out Spencerville and it's, you got back to work real quick on Saturday. So, uh, you know, they're a great team and uh, I have a lot of respect for, for Coach Zerby and his program. And uh, I think it's two teams that could do, you know, some good in the playoffs, but you know, someone's going to go home week 11. That's right, so only one's going to be able to. I guess that's the, that's the negative with it. And I, I, I love him and his program. So, you know, that's the, that's the downside of it. I was at your scrimmage against Marion Local. You guys looked great then, but how has this team improved week by week to where you're at right now? Yeah, and I, I think that's just it. I think they've gotten better each week. And, you know, you, you expect that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the thing with this team, is we saw you know big jumps from the week to week and uh, maybe just not in small things but in a wide wide variety of things and I, I think offensively we about week four week five we started to become really balanced and really throwing the ball very well and that helped us a lot and defensively it was a process you know this this defense really hasn't been together since about week five so wow. all the pieces kind of came into place there we shuffled some guys around and and then I thought we you know, started to get better from there on. Saw a Facebook video of your post-game little huddle, Roger Arroyo, yeah. uh, such a big part of your team. And he said, we said in the beginning, guys, we had that camp out you know, for yeah. the first uh, night of practice. We said we're a family, and yeah. we've gotten here as a family. Yeah. How important is that aspect of it? Obviously, you've got to have players, you've got to have coaches that make a team a team. But that family aspect and what Roger brings, how, how important is that? Well, you know, our success is the Lord's success. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. I'm not a... I'm not a real smart guy, but I'm smart enough to realize that um, the Lord has blessed me with great assistant coaches and great players, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I'm just trying to play my part in it, you know, really. But um, Roger's great, and uh, he, he brings a, he's such a, he's such a passionate guy. Yeah. He's passionate for God, and he brings that into our team. And, you know, to me, that's, this is our platform, it's our chance, and, um, it's one thing to win games, but it's another thing to, to win people for the Lord, and, you know, that's the ultimate goal. Very special there. It's going to be a good game, the rematch, this time at Delphus. And, and you're going to have five wide, and you're going to throw it around <laughs> a little bit, right? That's, yeah, we're putting Spencer in a whole will new never offense. expect it coming. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to advise John Zerby to do the same yeah. thing. These guys know what they're talking about. When yeah. we return, we will talk with Coach Zerby after this Donato's pizza break here on the special edition of the Sports Report, the Football Preview Show. Welcome back to this special edition of the Sports Report. You see the brackets behind me as we unveil Division 7 coming up next, but we're still talking Division 6, Region 22, and John Zerby, the Spencerville head coach, joining us now. Uh, got to turn around and get a chance to play Delphus Jefferson once again. So, some nice motivation for the guys, I would imagine. Well, I mean, just to be in this situation and be able to make it to the postseason, mm -hmm. it, you know, we're very grateful for that. Uh, we've had a, an outstanding season, no doubt, and uh, although we lost to the best team in our conference, I mean, you look at the whole picture and you walk away and you say, we've had a great season. And the thing that we can't do is just focus on one game. It was, it was a great team. We felt like we had opportunities we didn't capitalize on. Our mentality, it, mentality should be, and it will be, that uh, we can win this game Saturday night. Yeah, Coach Summers and you and all of us were talking beforehand, and there's not a whole lot of plays the two teams run. <laughs> you know what they're going to bring at you. You know what you're going to run. So how do you make adjustments throughout the week? Is it a personnel thing? How do you do that? Well, I, I, I think the biggest thing is it's not as much preparation as what you would think. I mean, we're not going to spend any more or less time preparing for them. Mm. I think it's more about the execution on the field. I mean, you know, our guys have to, they have to do the things that, that we've asked them to do. And, and, you know, if you watch film, you see a lot of times they're not doing those things and, and not executing. We had the ball several times in the red zone, didn't score. You know, things like that. I mean, and, and to put in new things at this point, you know, I think you're, you, you go backwards if you do that. So we're going to stay with what we know but we're going to put more of an emphasis on execution this week. Similar situation to last year, lost to Crestview in the regular season, came back, played them the first week of the playoffs, and, yeah. and you got to win there, so you want the same result. But 
Uh, does it feel the same going into week 11? Oh, it's an old NWC opponent that we lost to. Well, I mean, I, personally, it would be, it'd be nice to, to experience another team and go <laughs> to a different place. Um, but um, at the same time, you know, you get to play your rival uh, twice. Mm. You get the opportunity to face them. The fans, I, I think, of each school will be excited right. um, because this is such a great rivalry. And, um, you know, we have a lot of respect for them and their coaches. And, um, and I do for Coach Summers. I, I really enjoy coaching against him. Um, so I, I think it's, it's an exciting thing. I mean, I, I know that, you know, after you just get beat by your rival, it's maybe not the best situation, but we're going to make the best of it. What will this week be like around Spencerville? It's the rivalry week, week two. There's going to be another, <laughs> you know, big preparation like we saw last week just because it is the rivalry aspect? I think so, yeah. and I think that the, the big thing for us is that um, we, we've got to know who we are. I mean, we are, we're a good football team. We're a team that has won a lot of games, and we've, um, we play good football, and I think we just have to remind our kids of that and um, also remind them that the team that we're playing is a good football team. This, these are two good teams, and, and we, we've seen that in, in Crestview last year. Little things can change the game dramatically, yeah. and um, there were some little things that happened Friday night that I felt like changed the game dramatically. So. Um, you know, I think kids, uh, they're a little bit more resilient than coaches. <laughs> you know, us coaches, we live with this stuff forever. It'll never go away. But kids, they move on pretty quickly. So I don't think it'll be hard to convince our kids of that. We're excited for the rematch here on TV44. Jefferson will host Spencerville this time around. When we return, we finish strong with Division 7 brackets and breakdown. Stay right here. Tons of teams from our area will compete in Week 11. Well, since Division 7 was added, we expect it to be filled with the brim with playoff-bound local teams, and this year is no exception. Let's begin in Region 24, where Macomb takes the top seed. What a season for the Panthers. They lost to Marion Local in a close game in the opener, but since then, nine straight wins, all by at least three scores, and they take the top spot. Chris Algie and company will host Crestview on Friday night. Four and six nights getting in as the eighth seed, and then a BVC matchup in the 4-5 game. Lipsick is back in the postseason for the seventh straight year. Five and five Vikings will host five and five Arlington. Josh McGrain's first season at the helm for the Red Devils, and they're back in the playoffs taking on a familiar opponent. Lipsick won the regular season meeting 22 to seven just two weeks ago at Lipsick. And our final bracket of the night comes from Region 26. All games being played on Friday night, 7.30 starts. Minster, the top spot, defending state champs in D6, will look to claim the D7 crown this year. And that journey begins with a matchup against eight-seeded Fort Lormie. Redskins started 0-4, but Whit Park's team won its final six games, grabbed the share of the NWCC title, and they'll play in Week 11 for the seventh straight year. Riverside shares that league title with Lormie. Pirates are the four seed and will host 6-4 Ada. Fort Recovery making its second straight postseason appearance as a three seed this year, and they will host their first ever playoff game against Miami Valley Christian Academy. Lehman Catholic makes it three NWCC teams in this region. Cavs will travel to Covington in the 2-7 matchup. Mark and the guys have more on the small school divisions and who's got the best chance to raise the trophy. Thank you, Matt. As let's take a look at Division 6 now, and we'll start with Region 20. And you look at this region, a little bit light for the local, local teams. You've got uh, Tenora, Van Buren, Ayersville all making Region 20. And Aaron Matthews, we'll, we'll start with you. Van Buren, a team you saw last year in the postseason. Of course, they beat LCC in their first ever playoff trip a season ago. Had a rough start, but Van Buren, give them credit, they did not give up. Came on strong, won their final seven games of the season. Now they're in week 11 for the second year in a row. Kevin Schaub has done a really good job transforming this Van Buren program in the six years that he has been there now. Back-to-back -back playoff appearances uh, for this program. And to get up to, you know, to the number five seed speaks volumes of what they did with their body of work. They're going to take on an undefeated Gibsonburg team who is at 10-0, who ran the table the regular season for the second straight year. Gibsonburg, though, going to try not to bow out and not get shut out like they did in week 11 a year ago. And if people are looking at these regions and saying, well, why is region 20 so much lighter of teams from our area? That's because the state rebracketed re everything and redrew back after last season where some of the teams that were in region 20 a year ago, the Bluffton's, the Lima Central Catholics of the world as a prime example, have now been rebracketed south. Yeah, Bluffton in Region 22 finished ninth. If they had been in Region 20, they probably would have been fifth in playing in Week 11. Mark Miller, a couple of GMC teams that just played against each other on Friday night. Tenora and Ayersville make it. Tenora is the two seed. 
They have an eight and one record because they couldn't find anybody to place mm -hmm. Antwerp on their schedule. Well, I can see why teams don't want to play them because they're really good every year and they they're good in the playoffs. So this is a, a tested team that uh, this is nothing new to them. So they'll be a tough out. Ayersville, this is kind of new for them. You know, they had the great year, but if I am I, if I'm correct, I think they were eight and zero and then they lost the last two games. So. Uh, you know, they've got to be questioning themselves a little bit. Kind of the opposite thing of Van Buren, 0-3, 7-3. They're on a heck of a win streak. So a lot of it is, like Mark Schein alluded to the, the Spartans earlier, what's our momentum going into this thing? You know, you can't just flip a switch between regular season and, and playoffs. So uh, those two teams uh, kind of go in opposite directions. Yeah, Rams falling to Tenor and Hicksville. Hicksville making the postseason as well. Mark Schein now, let's move on to Region 22. Marin Local, Division 7 state champions the last two years. Division six champ three years ago. They're back in Division six. Yeah. Is that much of an adjustment for Tim Goodwin and company? Well, they're going to play some different schools, certainly not teams they're typically familiar with, the size of school. But you know, the thing is, Mary Local, let's just show up and play. They know where they're at. They have confidence. They've been through all this before. Now, there's a reason the state doesn't just have the trophies FedEx to Mary, Maria Stein <laughs> and to Colbar. I mean, you have to go play the games, but certainly they're going to be play, favored in their five tournament games. Mark Miller, Jefferson Spencerville. They <laughs> met just last week. They meet again this week. An interesting dynamic in which you've got two coaches that not only really respect each other, but they genuinely like each other, and they have to go head-to-head -head for the second week in a row. We heard from Coach Zerby. We heard from Co Coach Summers. There's nothing really special and unique about what they do. They know what each other's going to try and do. Is this going to be a game that comes down to execution then in Delphus? Yeah, I think so. You know, a lot of times, and we've seen it over the years, where somebody will turn right around and play the same team, and advantage a lot of times goes to the team that lost that first one. It seems like they've learned from it, they, you have the attention of the coach a little bit more, and they have revenge on their minds. I'm not sure how much that will play in here. They know each other so well. So I think it does come down to what you just said. Turnovers, penalties, mistakes. Don't we say that every week, but especially in big games where teams are very evenly matched like these two guys. And a year ago, Spencerville, after losing to Crestview in the regular season, beat the Knights mm -hmm. in Week 11 and moved on to Week 12 yeah. one season ago. Aaron, let's move on to Division 7 now. The Macomb Panthers, they take on Crestview. The Knights get into the postseason despite a 4-6 and six record. Pandora Gilboa finishing at ninth in this region, but Macomb, a dominant defense by the Panthers. They gave up 21 points to Liberty Benton last week, gave up 24 to Marin Local in week one. Between that, I think they only gave up like 17 total points. A defense that has been the very stout for Macomb as they host Crestfield. Well, I got to see Macomb firsthand, you know, back in week five when they hosted Lipsick. Took, took care of Lipsick with ease. What impressed me most about Macomb is that they can run multiple sets offensively with ease. I mean, the, the guys know what exactly they're doing. There's no confusion. I mean, they can line up wing T concepts. They can empty the backfield, go spread, and go power eye in three consecutive plays. And defensively, they are just a nasty football team. Crestview's going to have their work cut out for them because I think this Macomb team has a little bit of a mission on their mind uh, with Coach uh, Chris Algie, one of the most underrated coaches in the state of Ohio, if you ask me. Mark Miller, 4-5 matchup, an all-BVC matchup. Lipsick started off a rough start of the year. They've come on strong and got a big win Friday over Hopewell Loudon to ensure this playoff spot. So now they're going to take on Arlington. Yeah, maybe the best game we got, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 5-5. Five and five. They're in the same league. They're four. I mean, this is great. They got the geographical rivalry. This could really be something, and, and whoever moves on is going to be another one that plays clean. Both these teams have been in the playoffs year after year after year, so that won't be a surprise. It's who plays good this week. Mark Miller, heard from you on that one. Let's hear from you now on next region, mm -hmm. another regular season rematch, mm -hmm. Minster Fort Lormy. Mm -hmm. Not separated very far mileage-wise. Right. Whit yeah. Parks has done a good job of turning around this Redskin team after a very slow start. Now they're going to have to take on the defending state champs for the second time this year. Now, opposite Spencerville and Jefferson, this one happened a long time ago, and things have changed on both sides. Minster weathered that max storm and lost to two defending state champs, and Fort Lormy's a lot better than they were in week one under a new coach. So I think that first game, you can pretty much not even look at that film unless you're just trying to get numbers of personnel because I think this is going to be a lot different. Minster certainly with the number one, but I think Fort Lormy's not a number eight seed if you go on who's, who's good at this time of the season. We'll wrap it up with this. I'm going to ask you this, all three of the same question. Outside of schools from the MAC, who do you think has the best chance of making it to Columbus? Mark Schein. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't pick a Mac school, that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure right now. I like Lima Senior offensively. I like what they, they did much better defensively until they got to the Florida Central Catholic game when they can score points. Where they're at psychologically, I don't know. I, I, as a Spartan grad and a Spartan fan, I'd like to see them get that far. A little shaky. 
I'm going to say Macomb. Uh, now, they do have to go through, you know, Minster, obviously, a max school to get there, but I just think they're playing so solid. Even their one loss was a good, good loss. If yeah. that's, you know, I know it's an oxymoron, but uh, I, th I think they could uh, really make some, some noise here in the playoffs. C, Macomb, Wapakoneta. All right. Thank you very much, Aaron Matthews, Mark Miller, and Mark Schein. That's going to do it for us tonight on this special Sports Report Edition playoff preview show. Stay tuned. Watch the ticker. Follow us on Twitter. Monday afternoon, we'll announce our playoff rebroadcast games. We have to wait and see who some other people decide to broadcast first. We'll let you know which games you'll be able to see on WOSN next weekend. For everybody here at WOSN, thank you for joining us tonight on the Sports Report Special Edition.